GM Ross Atkins was criticized at the trade deadline for not making another move for an impact bat. And a report came out recently that a lot of players were hell-bent on coming to Toronto and nothing materialized. So we'll break that down and much more in this episode of Jay's Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Before we get into anything today, shout out to Canada. Canada basketball for qualifying for the Olympics for the first time since 2000. They just won an unbelievable game against Spain and really back and forth contest, Nick. And that was just great to watch as a Canadian. Yeah, it's phenomenal and hopefully gives the Blue Jays some energy heading into today's game. Before we get into that <laughs> uh, video today, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 8,000. And like you said, a report came out from Ben Nichols and Smith regarding both the trade deadline and the waiver deadline that just happened uh, about four or five days ago. So let's just get right into the report. It's a very interesting one. It's going to be a bit of a uh, interesting discussion. So this came out yesterday. So remember, the Blue Jays had plenty of chances to acquire other players. They considered bats like Mark Hanna and Tommy Pham at the trade deadline before, of course, promoting Davis Schneider, who had, you know, phenomenal home runs. This is the key part. As the end of August neared, at least one established middle infielder made it known that he'd be interested in going to Toronto only to be rebuffed, one source said. The Blue Jays told the free agent they believe in Clement's offensive adjustments and ability to play all around the diamond. And Peter, we're going to focus on this now for a few minutes here. We don't know exactly who that player was that a week ago Ross Atkins said, no, we don't want to you know, bring you to Toronto. It is a waiver wire player or at least a free agent most likely. And middle infielder is the key thing. So we kind of did some discussion off camera to discuss because obviously Josh Donaldson comes to mind, but he's not a middle infielder. He was a third baseman. Many of the guys, the Angels didn't release a middle infielder to the waiver wire. So we're thinking maybe Colton Wong may have been the, the culprit here, or maybe Gene Segura, those two, which are a bit underwhelming. But what are your thoughts on this uh, report regarding, you know, the Jays rebuffing a guy who wanted to come to Toronto, which probably doesn't happen too, too often. Uh, established is uh, becoming a very arbitrary term nowadays because uh, Gene Segura is established and so is Colton Wong, but they're shells of themselves and they're not really good players at this point. So we always rag on Santiago Espinal and Kevin Biggio for their lack of offensive output, but those guys are not going to be any better. They're going to get here and you're going to hear the same sort of complaints from the fan base. So I'm glad that they didn't go that down that route. Uh, Ernie Clement has been phenomenal. He's been putting the bat on the ball. He's been kind of a spark plug in the, in the bottom of that order for the Blue Jays and his defensive versatility, although it wasn't great yesterday, it shows up uh, and he could play third base, he could play second, he could play some short. I'm sure he could play some outfield as well. And he's someone that could help the Blue Jays. I don't want to see him lose his spot on the roster when uh, Bo Bichette comes back. So I'm glad that nothing materialized, but it's very interesting because Toronto has become kind of a destination. They have a lot of players that guys want to play with, like Vladdy, like Bo Bichette. And I could see why they're getting all this interest from other free agents like Kevin Kiermaier and Brandon Belt. And it just shows the lack of game changers that were available on the market. We're talking about Colton Wong and Gene Seguro over here. Those guys just don't move the needle for the Toronto Blue Jays. And a lot of criticism was thrown Ross Atkins' way. But what more could he have done? Maybe he could have gotten Tommy Pham. Maybe he could have gotten someone else. But there wasn't necessarily that one big-time bat on the market. They weren't available. So I don't know. I wouldn't dwell on it too much. But it, it just... Uh, there wasn't much out there available to, to make this team significantly better. Yeah, and again, we, we traded for a, a middle infielder at the deadline of Paul DeYoung, and people argue, and it's still maybe up for debate among Jays fans whether we you know cut ties too early. I think you know he's not performing very well at all with the San Francisco Giants. He would have been you know a good defender, but I think ultimately, like you said, the guy was probably Colton Wong or Gene Segura because that kind of falls under the uh, quote established name but again he's not having a very good season at all they're both very good especially Wong very good defenders but Paul DeYoung would have been the same thing so it wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense but going on that a little bit more they kind of do some uh, some more interesting reports that I've been Nicholas and Smith kind of talking about the deadline again and both the specifically the waiver deadline it said later the Blue Jays did extensive background work on various players waived um uh, you know Angels players, uh, most notably, they had the payroll flexibility to make claims, but some players like Lucas Giolito weren't fits, and Ronaldo Lopez went to other teams with higher waiver priority, which kind of means, Peter, that the Jays seems like made a claim for Ronaldo Lopez, but ultimately didn't uh, get him, which is interesting, and that left former Blue Jay Randall Gritchick unclaimed, but once again, the Jays made... Uh, made it clear that they prefer their internal options and it was a bit surprising they said among sources that you know Gritchick wasn't claimed but 
uh, he has he's having not a very very good year especially since coming over to the angels but seems like the jays may have made a couple of claims they did their due diligence maybe ronaldo lopez but the bullpen's already pretty stacked up as is but any thoughts on this or maybe if they could have went for a, a randall gritchick type player uh at the the waiver wire though no one else did so it would have been you know i guess interesting i think the outfield right now is pretty set and you want kevin kiermaier dalton varsho and george springer playing pretty much every day it's nice to have a fourth outfielder but you have that in whit merrifield you have that in davis schneider as well so if you bring in randall gritchick you create a log jam amongst your guys and then that takes away at bats from the guys that you want in that lineup every day so i, I wouldn't have done it if i was the blue jays i think they made the right choice by staying away but you also do have to check in and you gotta do your due diligence in a sense and and make sure that you're exploring all possibilities to make your team better because the blue jays have underperformed they got to find some sort of a spark here and go on a long winning streak and gain some ground but i don't think randall gritchick was the guy to go ahead and help them with that hunter renfro probably would have been nice i'm sure the jays were in on him i'm sure they were in on harrison bader as well because those guys are definitely some that can move the needle and some that can help you out in a playoff push but i don't think randall gritchick is yeah and you're already seeing the impact that you know all those waiver claims and bader and renfro are having on the the mayor or the reds i think bader walked off yesterday in, in their win but Regardless, I agree. They didn't mention those two names, which is a bit interesting, but Gritchick is not a guy that the Jays, you know, they have better options. Even on the team right now, I would argue, you know, you have Barsho, Kiermaier, Merrifield, Springer, all those guys ahead of Randall Gritchick, especially when this year specifically, Randall Gritchick's power has mostly vanished. It's mainly, you know, he's turned into a bit of a contact hitter, which is not something the Jays, you know, need and never thought something we'd ever say watching him play for however many years he did with the Blue Jays. And from a bullpen standpoint, we just got Chad Green up. They knew that Chad Green was going to be coming up. So whether they made a claim for Ronaldo Lopez, who's been a solid reliever, he has like a 3.8 or 3.9 ERA somewhere in the in the middle there this year, wouldn't have moved the needle as well. So, you know, looking back at it, the only two guys, and we discussed this on a video, were Hunter Renfro Harrison Bader. Those are the two guys that would have made an impact for the Blue Jays, specifically, and you were pre advocating pretty hard for Hunter Renfro. Ultimately, there was zero way we got him. Who knows if we put in a claim, but it wouldn't have mattered because the Reds and the Guardians just went on a claim spree. And I think the MLB needs to change the way that this works, but maybe that's a, a thought for another day because it's very, very strange yeah. that that many players are getting picked up by teams. It's rewarding the bad teams, I get it, but maybe once you make one claim, you can't make another claim for however many you know days or whatever it is because I even think the Reds who got Harrison Bader and Hunter Renfro they probably didn't want both those guys they probably just put in two claims assuming they wouldn't get both but any quick thoughts on that before we uh, wrap up my little rant there about the MLB's bad yeah. system I'm right with you there I'm right with you there on the claims I mean if you do make one claim you should go back to the bottom of the list that's how it should work doesn't make sense i mean the cleveland guardians got all those guys they're five and a half games out of a playoff spot and i'm sure they didn't even want all of them they just didn't want the twins to go out and get them or, or they didn't want someone else to go out and get them so it is a stupid system if you're going to do it that way just extend the trade deadline by another 15 Bring days and like allow to teams be. to make moves but yeah it, it just whatever man i mean it is what it is i don't think any of the players available would have made the world series uh made the jays world series favorites they're not that drastic of changes there's a reason why they got dfa'd right so uh, the jays have what they have right now they got to make it work with whoever's in the lineup day in day out and there's no excuses now you lost yesterday to the colorado rockies you got to go out there and win the series today enough enough of the talking enough of praying that you get better players on the market it's just time for you guys that are in-house to start playing better and that all starts at the top with your superstars yeah and yesterday it was a pretty rough loss which is kind of why we're not going to discuss that too much but at the end of the day we're one and a half games back we've made up two games of ground in the past week so we're in a pretty good spot especially when the rangers uh, we play them in a couple series down the road but that'll wrap up the video let us know what your thoughts are on this and if maybe any free agents or the waiver wire guys you would like to get and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully Kevin Gosman can take care of business in what is a crazy Coors Field.